Anya here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks and today we are making a pumpkin garland. Now this garland has pumpkins and tassels so it's perfect for your autumnal decorations and of course with the tassels it makes it a little bit more special. Now I have to admit I did look at this garland from a little distance and I thought Oh my goodness, what if I made these in bright colours? What if I put different coloured tassels underneath the pumpkins and that would create lovely lanterns? And that way my garland could stay up all year long. Or for instance, you could make this garland in the colours of your interior or maybe in the colours of a nursery room something like that and then it could serve as a permanent decoration for that room. So there are so many possibilities with this garland. So if you do make the pumpkin garland or even the lantern garland, do show me a picture of it in our Facebook group Ophelia Talks Crochet and I would be very interested to see your finished project. So let's get started. What do you need for this project? Well, we will be making some pumpkins. For those, you will need some orange and some green yarn. I have spice here and meadow. This is a DK yarn and I am using a three and a half hook for that. As usual, um, normally you would be using a four hook, but this depends on your tension. So for me, it's a three and a half hook. Then of course you have a darning needle, some scissors. And we are making tassels, so I always use a big pair of scissors to cut off my tassels all in one go. And here I have a piece of cardboard around which I have been winding my yarn for my tassels. And the revolution length is 8 inches, so find something that will give you a length of strand of 8 inches. Then of course here I have some stuffing as well because of course we need to put some stuffing inside the pumpkin. And in a moment I will show you how to do the pumpkin, the tendril, the tassel and then also how to crochet it all together to turn it into a garland. So let me show you how to make the pumpkin. So with our pumpkin colour, so this will be the spice, you're going to make your slip knot, insert your hook and you're going to chain 12 chains. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. Then you chain one more, but you keep your eye on that 12th one. This one is our turning chain, so we are not going to be um, counting that one. Then you yarn over and you go into your 12th chain and you do a half double crochet. There we go. Then you yarn over and you go into the next chain and you do a half double crochet there. So you're going to be doing 12 half double crochets all along your chain. So a half double crochet is yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, you've got three loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through the three loops on your hook. Yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through three. And this is how you will do your stitches until you reach the last stitch. And then into the last one as well. There we go. Voila. You should now have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 Vs on top of your bra. So now we are going to do the next row. So chain one and turn. So this is our turning chain, it doesn't count. So now we're going to do half double crochets as well, but we are going to do them in the back loop only. So if you tip the work towards you, you will see your Vs. And this 
strand here is the front loop and this strand there is the back loop. So the one that's the back loop is the one that's the furthest away from you. So you yarn over, you tip the work towards you, you go into that very first stitch here and you pick up the back loop and then you do your stitch of a half double crochet. So yarn over, tip, pick up the back loop and do your stitch. Make sure you don't pull too hard on that back loop. Look, that makes quite a hole. It will come down a bit, but still don't pull it too hard. And of course, you are going to be doing 12 half double crochets. And you are creating a little ridge there because, of course, you are only using the back loop. And this will be a good ridge for, of course, our pumpkins because they have ridges. But also, I think it would work for a lantern as well. So now you might think you're at the end of the row already, but I can see another V here. Do I do that or do I not do that? How many have you got? Two, four six, eight, ten, eleven. So this indeed is our last stitch. So we have now made it to the end of the row. You're going to chain one, turn, and you're going to do exactly the same thing. Find the back loop of that very first stitch. and do your 12 half double crochets in the back loop only. So here we find the last stitch, there we go, voila. And I have done my 12 half double crochets. Now we are going to do this until we have done 13 rows. So one, two, three, and I'm going to keep on going until I have 13 rows. You will end on the same side as our starting tail, okay? So make sure you are, and then I will see you ready to crochet your pumpkin together. So chain one, turn, first stitch into that same stitch the turning chain is coming out of, in the back loop only, and off we go doing our stitches. I have now done 13 rows. I have my working yarn on the same end as my starting end here. And my piece is about six and a half centimeters wide or two and a half inches. And it is about 13 centimeters tall or five inches. So now we are ready to crochet the two ends together. So I'm going to chain one and turn. I'm going to keep this yarn on the front here so it doesn't get underneath my work and I can't reach it in a moment. I'm bringing up the back here or the base of my piece. And here, the very first V that we are going to go into, we're going to be picking up the back loop as we have been. And then now here, we are going to have a look at the leftover strands of that chain. So find the first chain there. There we go. That's that leftover strand. And then now here we have our working yarn in our hand, ready to get started with doing a single crochet. There we go. So now next stitch, you pick up the back loop. And then here you go to the next stitch to also pick up that leftover strand of the chain. It's a little bit awkward to start with, but once you've got it, you'll be fine. There we go. This one and the third chain there. The back loop and this one here. Voila. And this is how you will be crocheting your two sides together. 
and this is how you will continue to the end of the row. Now make sure when you get to the end of the row you find that last back loop, that last little chain there and you do your single crochet. So there we go. So you now have one end here and one end here. So let's cut off the yarn. Voila. Let's pull out the loop here. And I think, look, this is what it looks like. And so we have nice ridges for our pumpkin. So now you grab hold of one end, put it on your needle. And we're going to close up this end here. So it's going to be fairly simple. We're just going to weave in and out with our needle all along the edge of our little panel here that we have created. So in, out, in, out, sort of quite regular intervals until of course you get back to where you started from and then you pull it tight, open it up a bit, flatten it a bit and pull it really close. And then you can just go back in and weave across. So you're not only securing the base, if you're going to be using this as the base of your pumpkin, but you're also sewing in the end. There we go. Do this a couple of times. And then I'm going to go into the middle or if you're too far away from the middle, weave it towards the middle and then go into the middle and go into your pumpkin. And that is the end of that. So that is one end secured. Then this can just be left in there. Grab some of your stuffing, not too much, not too little. Push it in. Now don't put too much stuffing in so if you fill it too much you will get holes look like this that doesn't look so nice so don't put too much in just enough to shape it really. Now we've got this end and we're going to do exactly the same. So you weave in and out of the stitches on the edge of the strands wherever you can sort of go into which is you know on the edge make sure it's all on the edge there we go voila a little bit more okay so now that we're here we're going to pull it make it into a little ball shape. Now it doesn't have that typical pumpkin shape but we are going to go across to the other side here just across from there and then you go down. Let's see if we can, yeah there we go. And now you're going to pull it, look it goes in, then here you go across and you bring it up again, everything comes out again don't worry. And now we're going to pull it all and look, it all becomes a little more, bit more pumpkin shaped. And this is of course where you can do your shaping as much or as little as you want. And now I'm going to secure this one here. So sew it in for some length to secure it. And then I just go in and come out wherever I can and we cut off the end. There we go. So this is our pumpkin. Let me show you how to make the tendril. So I've got my meadow, I'm making my slip knot, insert the hook and we are going to chain 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
8, 9 and 10. Now you can chain as many as you want, obviously not too many. Um, 10, 8, 12, 15, 7, it's fine. Okay. Then we chain 1 as our turning chain. And then from the 10th one onwards, you are going to be placing two single crochets in every chain. So you work your way back to your first chain and you place two single crochets in each chain. So in effect, you have done 20 single crochets. And as you can see already, my chain is starting to curl. And that is the effect that we need, of course, for our little tendril on top of our pumpkin. And then here we have this one here that I can manage to get into. But I think that last one, yeah, I'm going to not do that. I'm just going to <laughs> close it up a bit more. So there we go. So here we have a little tendril. Give it a little bit more of a twist by curling it yourself a little bit. And there we go. That is our tendril ready for our pumpkin. So let me cut off the arm. I pull out the hook and then I just tie these together just to secure it. There we go. Let me show you how to make the tassel. So let's make our tassel. So I have wound my yarn around this piece of cardboard here, which is 11 centimeters or about four inches. And so if you then have the revolution, that then is 22 centimeters or eight inches. And now I have a short piece of meadow here as well, which I will put underneath here. So I can tie it all up. There we go. Voila. Now I'm going to cut off with the big scissors my strands. This can go. And now we have our 50 strands. So I've wound it round 25 times. So now we have our little tassel here. So now I'm going to get some of my pumpkin color here. Let's cut off a length of about 50 centimeters. And I'm just going to tie it round quite simply, quite high up to have a little nice sphere at the top of my tassel there. And I'm going to come back it round again. So I have like a thin band, not too thick, but just a thin band. And I'm going to tie it and pull it nice and tight. There we go. So I'll give it a double knot. Where am I? Here. Voila. And then what I usually do is I put these on the darning needle and I'm going to push them into the tassel. There we go. Voila, so you can't see that anymore. But then here we do have to cut them off because of course otherwise you will see the strands. So I'm going to get started with putting my little tendril onto my needle here. I'm going to push it into my pumpkin and bring it out as close to the middle as possible. Hold on to this and make sure you pull out the ends here. Then I'm going to put this back on my needle, of course. Then take your little tassel, go into there. But of course here I've only done one little knot, so I'm going to have to do another one. My ends are quite long because obviously I need to attach everything together. 
So until I know, it's better to have longer ends than what you need. So you go under that strand that holds the tassel together there. There we go. And then you take your strands from your tendril, go in another location and come back up. There we go. So we have now secured the tendril and the tassel. So let's pull them apart a little bit because I've done that a little bit too tight. There we go. Voila. And so this one now you can just sew in these ends by separating them out and doing it separately into the pumpkin. So I'm going to put one through there. I mean you can secure it a bit more into the tendril just to give it a little bit of a sewn in feeling <laughs> and make sure it's in the same color so that can go there so this can come off now and I can cut this one off here and then here I'm going to need to get rid of these but of course I can just put those into the tassel because they are long enough so let's do that and then we have everything secured so through there and come out the other end. There we go. Voila. And now you need to just cut these off. I haven't really tidied them up very much, uh, the tassels of the other ones, because I just thought it looked nice, a little bit unkempt, but it looks nice. So this is our pumpkin with the tassel. Now let me show you how to make the garland. Now to start off with your garland, you're going to make a chain. So make your slip knot, insert your hook, and you're going to just start chaining. Now depending on where you know you're going to tie this up, you might want to chain 100 chains or 200 chains, or it depends. But it's always better to go longer than shorter because then obviously uh, the longer you have your chain, the more possibilities you have to bridge a certain distance, but also to tie a knot, for instance. So I am not counting, I'm just doing it by eye and I just keep going. <laughs> so I have made a chain here of about a metre and 20 centimetres. I don't know how many chains that is. And now we're going to attach the first pumpkin. So I'm going to go and have a look at the tendril. And down here I can see a V that I could possibly pick up. So that's what I am going to do. So go under that V, pick it up and do a single crochet or a slip stitch, whatever you can to attach the two together. Then you are going to turn it all around and come back up your chain with some slip stitches. So this is a little bit awkward. You just need to make sure you have everything in the right position in your hands. But that way you will have a piece of the garland going down to your pumpkin and then coming back up again as well in that same strand. Let me just try and do a few more slip stitches going up my chain here. So if you want these to be the same length, then make sure you count how many you walk up again. But look, now my pumpkin is hanging off my chain like this. So now I'm just going to continue doing chains. And again, if you want your pumpkins to have the same distance apart, then you count your chains. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twenty. And then if you want to attach a pumpkin, you count how many chains you go down, attach your pumpkin, and then come back up and count those as well. So you have the same distance. So I think... Yeah, 20 chains in between. But then I'm going to do, how many do you think I did here? Let's count them. 
one one two three four five six seven okay so now i'm going to do seven chains one two three four five six seven i'm going to get my next pumpkin find a nice v on the tendril to go under or if you can't just anywhere near that base of the tendril yeah i think i'm through there we go do either a slip stitch or a single crochet whatever you can manage there voila then turn it all around and do your slip stitches to come back i'm doing seven one whoops yeah it's all a bit awkward what you're holding in your hands here the direction of everything that you're doing but it's manageable three four five six and seven and from here on one two three four five six seven eight nine ten you're doing your chains again and we counted 20 chains in between so this is how I'm going to continue and I will see you when my garland is finished. So as you can see I have connected all my pumpkins and here I just started counting but of course I have no more pumpkins to connect. I have eight of them so I think that's fine for me. So now I'm going to end here the same way as I started. I'm going to do another chain of about the same length of a meter and 20 centimeters. So I will see you when that is finished and when I have hung up my pumpkins. Or maybe they are pumpkin lanterns. So whatever you make, pumpkin lanterns or lantern pumpkins, it doesn't matter as long as you enjoyed this project. Thank you so very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!